Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Walter Scott. I am a designer and Adobe Certified Instructor for Illustrator. Uh, this video is all about the new Illustrator for iPad. It's just come out just this minute. Uh, you should be able to go to the Apple App Store now and download it. Uh, this video here is going to be kind of a, a ride along with me uh, using it as a designer okay, to design stuff. Uh, there are other use cases for this a bit of software, an Illustrator, for example. So uh, if you are more of an Illustrator, there might be somebody else's video that might be better for you. But if you're a designer, I'm kind of a bit of a generalist, graphic, web, UX, video design. Okay, I'm gonna show you through some of the project. I'm doing a bit of logo work at the moment, and I'm gonna share my experiences with that with you. Uh, to get started, I'll do a little bit of an FAQ. Okay, there are a few questions that I know I had, okay, before I got my hands on it. And I'll quickly run through those now and then we'll jump in and I'll show you around the place. All right, let's do that now. So the questions, uh, how much does it cost? If you are already an Adobe Creative Cloud subscriber, it doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, you just sign in with your Adobe ID and it works. If you want the I, you know, the Illustrator for iPad by itself, it is $9.99 US dollars a month. Uh, from the App Store, check what it costs in your country from the App Store, but it's around that sort of price. Uh, there's a 30 day trial. So if you do watch this video and you're like, actually I'd like to give it a try, go check out the 30 day trial. Uh, also you can buy Illustrator by itself, like the desktop version, okay? And I think uh, you can combine that with the iPad. If you've already got the Illustrator, um, you know, um, by itself license, check. I'm, I imagine that's all wrapped up together, but uh, either free as part of the license or $9.99 a month. Next question, I got a handy dandy notebook. Uh, will it work on my iPad? It'll work on uh, an OS of 13.4 and above. Um, <laughs> I got it and I was like, will it work with my iPad? See this thing here? I'm not sure how much you can see. Let's see how the camera works. Can you see? <laughs> it will not work on this one. This is the kids one. It's about 10 years old and you can see sellotape holds the glass in and there's food on it. Okay, the bees come looking for this thing. Okay, there's food to eat. Will it work on an iPad Pro? Yes, it does. My kids don't know this one exists. Okay, I keep this secret up in my office. So check how old your iPad is. If it's really old, it's not gonna work. It doesn't have to be an iPad Pro. Okay, it just needs to be a relatively late model one. Uh, you can often the um, ones that have the Apple Pencil. If you've got the Apple Pencil with the iPad, you're good to go. Uh, is it on Android and Windows and my iPhone? Okay, not the iPad. No, not at the moment. Uh, they don't have like great plans to do it. This sort of stuff ends up being very Apple iPad world for some reason. And what they've kind of hinted at is if you are really desperate for on these other platforms, make a lot of noise, social media. Okay, and they'll make it for the group of people who make the most noise. Uh, how does it compare to something like Photoshop for iPad or Fresco? Okay, for iPad, it is different. So Photoshop think uh, manipulating photographs, okay? Fresco think real, you know, uh, kind of emulating real world stuff like pencils and pens and paints, okay? It looks very realistic. Whereas Illustrator for iPad is in the uh, illustration side, kind of vector art. In my case, it's used for things like logo design, UI design, icons, that type of look okay so those are those three different kind of things that adobe are doing at the moment all right that's my faq's over let me jump in there and i'll show you yeah my experiences with the ipad let's uh jump in there now all right so we're back at the ipad um it's not going to be like a complete run through it's going to be more of uh my first impressions how i'm using it um i've only had it for a little while but it is really changing the way i work um so Kind of a, I like the pen, it's a bit precise when we're doing kind of pen tool stuff, you can just use your finger. Um, you do not need the ridiculous glove, like it kind of works fine without it. You can turn it off in here to say, uh, where is it, input, there's option in here that says palm rejection. <laughs> They've changed the name of that since I was last in here, but you can have a little look and that will get better. But um, for the moment, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna make a new file, custom size, I'm gonna make it pixels, and I'm gonna make it 500 and 500. RGB, it's got, it's got like, they've done a really nice job of bringing through, not every part of Illustrator desktops in here, 
um, but they've brought through all the stuff that I've needed as a designer. Um, it's been pretty, pretty great. So I'm gonna create a file. And what I'd like to do is actually, I'll show you doing this camera thing. I'll plug it in in a second, but I wanna show you like, often the way I'm working is I'll get my, uh, um, like some of my hand drawings, okay? And then switch to like this option here. You can't really see it, I'll, I'll zoom in in a second, but um, I can switch to my camera or my cloud documents and I can kind of use the power of iPad <laughs> um, having a camera, which is nice. Um, can you see it? This is not the greatest um, flow I know. You can kind of see, I can take a photo. This is the one I'm gonna do. Uh, it's kind of the one I wanna start building with you. Okay, and then I will plug this in now and we will switch to, there we go. Let's plug it in and we'll switch to looking at directly at the screen. All right, so we inside the machine. Um, you'll see this like little blue dot. That's my finger or the Apple Pencil kind of dragging. So I'm just resizing. You'll also notice that underneath there's a bunch of icons underneath the image here. Uh, I'm using this kind of fourth one and I can kind of just click hold it and move things around like, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll move it over there and we'll lock it, which is the fifth icon along, and we'll start redrawing it. So two fingers, pinching and zooming, very typical kind of device stuff. What I'd like to do is the toolbar of cross here. I'm gonna click and hold it, grab the circle tool, pick a fill color, any old thing. Pink, ready pink, any old pink. And although not a few, uh, full tutorial, I'll kind of give you the basics. Can you see this like little button down here? This, this is like your shift key or your alt key on a keyboard, okay, or option on a Mac. And it just means that like if I drag out a circle, I can get any old size, but uh, two fingers on, if I just tap the iPad with two fingers, it undoes. But what I want to do is constrain, uh, constrain proportions. All I need to do is hold this button down whilst I drag it out and it kind of locks in that, um, you know, uh, constrained proportion. So the height is the same as the width. So on two of those, I'm gonna duplicate it. There's a little duplicate button underneath. Um, so now I have two of them. Nope, click it once, duplicated. There it is, so now there's two of them above each other. And I'm gonna shrink one down. Like before, if I want to um, scale it proportionately, okay, I hold down that. It's called the um, primary touch button. I'm gonna undo that. If you click and hold it, you've got a secondary one, which is more like the option key. You can kind of just drag it out. It's kind of weird. Uh, well, it's, it's actually really intuitive to use. It's hard for me to describe. Click it once, shift key, drag it out. Um, clicking and holding and dragging out is like holding the option key down on a Mac, the alt key on a PC. And it means that I can constrain it to get it to go from the center. And because it's the same color, it doesn't look very different. So let's go these two colors. Just big contrasts. <laughs> um, so again, uh, let's grab that secondary button, drag it in kind of match that sort of circle over here. So uh, next thing I wanna do is probably one of the favorite um, features for Illustrator iPad is if I select both of these and over here on the right is a bunch of your kind of panels like normal, there's layers, uh, properties panel, there's lots over here. What I like is this fourth one down, okay? It is the Pathfinder, okay? And the cool thing about Pathfinder is, can you see these ones here? It actually gives you a little like preview of what the what it's gonna do. Does anybody use the one on the desktop and you kind of click the first one minus front and it normally works and you're like, nope, hit undo, then click the next one, hit undo, because the icons don't really help communicate it, whereas this gives you actual preview of what's gonna happen. So I want this one, minus front, be hole in it. Hopefully they bring that kind of thumbnail in this over to the desktop version as well. All right, so now I've got this kind of compound shape. I'm gonna draw that kind of tail thing there and I'm gonna use the pen tool. So over here in the toolbar on the left, okay, the regular old pen tool. And it's it's pretty good. If you can use the pen tool already on um, the desktop version, it's a really easy transition over. So I'm gonna switch the foreground and background color over here. I kind of just push the dot on the screen so you can kind of see where I'm going. So I'm gonna have a big um, stroke, no fill. And yeah, you kind of click once for a point. Um, I want to, yeah. Click once, actually I'll do a curve. So I'm gonna try and kind of follow this. So I'm clicking and dragging, and I'm just kind of looking at the image here and going about there. And I wanna break it, so I hold down the like the primary touch button and maybe drag that back to his home. Uh, click once, it's actually lost it, so I'm gonna go back to the direct selection tool and kind of select him there, go back to my pen tool, and yeah, connect him up. 
and let's get maybe this one here kind of close again to break it I'm just gonna break them across there so the pen tool works quite uh, you know quite regularly okay once you get used to that primary touch button um, you can go to your direct selection tool and kind of make your adjustments and the nice thing about it is it's pretty good at snapping like um, two fingers to drag it can you see I just dragged it onto this I went kind of close and it went snap it's a little bit hard to see because I got that blue dot on for you but there we go and this one here let's say I want to break this one because I don't want it to be you know destroying that side again you can hold down the shift key okay and you can kind of snap things like you do with the normal pen tool using the convert anchor point tool it's very intuitive okay so that's kind of what I want to do let me mess around with it um, actually I want an extra point down here so I'll convert that to a curve I'm going to hold shift key down and just break it again just so I've got do I want a little round down the bottom there maybe I do okay so I got these two handles controlling it and I want it to kind of follow into here how smooth is this going to be mm, we'll see all right the next kind of uh, thing that I'm using a lot in this program is back to the selection tool grabbing both of them and it's back in here with our um, Remember we looked at um, the Pathfinder before, so I don't want any of these. Okay, so the ones we used before, combine all, minus front, any of these. What I want is this Shape Builder here. The Shape Builder is really intuitive. Um, so what you can do is, watch this, I'll kind of click once, and I've kind of removed that bit. Okay, click once in there, I've cut that hole. I want to combine these, so I draw a line across the top of them. And that's what I want, I want these two shapes. Okay, so I'm going to go done at the top. And now I've got kind of the shape that I want to use. Okay, and that other one, that's what I'm looking to do. All right, and I want this kind of like gradient thing going on. So I am going to over here in my, I'm going to turn the stroke off. So I'm going to click there. And the fill color, I'm going to switch to gradient. And we looked at the freeform gradient tool from desktop. That has actually made it to the iPad, which is really cool. So I'm going to add it to this one. And I'm going to down the bottom here. Look at my swatches. Can you see down the bottom? That's one of my slotch, uh, swatch libraries. That's cool. They've got like all the color books in here, like Pantones. Um, let's go back to my libraries though. So my libraries. Mm, let's, oh, where is it? NDQ. It's the one I was using. So I'm going to go through, click on this color there, pick that color down here, go to that one, and maybe that one, another one there. I'm just kind of clicking once. It adds another gradient um, swatch I think that's what I'm gonna do now with these gradient um, uh, freeform gradients this like little circle here you can expand it to make it bigger and kind of influences more of it um, you can make it transparent if you need to which is this option you can just drag it up and down can you see it's just really intuitive I'm not I'm just kind of guess that I've never done it before nice work uh, illustrator for iPad team uh, let's do the same thing for this one let's click on this let's go to gradient Let's uh, freeform gradient it. Actually, I'm going to dive into it, double click it. So I'm going to change the freeform gradient as well. Actually, you know, what I'll do is let's just make it a fill color. So let's go down to and pick whatever one I used over there. What is at the top there? I think it's that one. Just so I wanted that kind of like blend across here so it looks like it's gradienting and tucking under two separate vectors. And you can see there, like, uh, not crazy complex, but all the kinds of things that I'm doing quite a lot are built into this. Um, if I hit back, what it comes down to in here, you can go into, actually, when you're inside of it or out here, you can go to the top right up here. I can click in here. I'm using the Apple Pencil, so I can kind of just draw Dan, and it will magically convert it <laughs> to letters. Um, not sure why I call it Dan, but hey, it's my name. Now, I won't cut back because you've seen it before, but it's appeared on my desktop now, so I could close this down and start working on it in the you know desktop version. Now, I'm surprised how much stuff is actually included in this, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to group for like a first version. That's why I'm not doing a full tutorial on this because it's it's quite new and they're, they're developing it quite a lot, but this version, like the pre-release I've got, is pretty amazing. Um, you can drag that out to duplicate it instead of just clicking it once to duplicate. Um, I'm going to bin one. So that's pretty cool. And let's say that I want two of these. I want this kind of like overlapping thing going on. I'm not even sure yet, but um, something like that. Yeah, blending modes came along. I was surprised that it's kind of ready for that sort of action. So over here in your properties panel, uh, fill blending mode, you know, and kind of work through. I have no idea. To get that kind of like cool interactive gradient thing 
overlapping stuff. <laughs> you get what I mean, hopefully. Something like that. I'm going for like a quotation marks and trying to get kind of a question marky look to it. Um, and a Q all kind of wrapped up in this thing. So it's, it's okay. Okay, so let's say that we do want to do, oh, I haven't decided on that yet. Anyway, um, let's say we want to do a more organic version. So the over here on the left, you've got the pencil tool. The pencil tool, no surprise, has an option for smoothing. Okay, and I'm going to get mine kind of, I want like an organic version of this. So I'm going to go to there, I'm going to pick a stroke that you can see from a distance. Um, yeah, that'll do for me. And I'm going to kind of do a more, yeah, a more organic version. But because I turned the smoothing on, hopefully it's going to help me draw a better circle. Two fingers, taps to undo. I want to get that kind of join nice. And that's going to do. All right, so the smoothing was up on that one. What I'm going to do is select it with the rectangle tool. And you'll see over the side here, actually, if I click it with the uh, direct selection tool, so there's these two tools over here, right? There's the selection tool and the direct selection tool. So I'm going to grab all of these. There, you could do it where you actually, you click on one point and you actually, can you see just about below there? Okay, I'm gonna click on it and go, you go away. Okay, and it's kind of kept its curve pretty nicely. It doesn't just like disappear. Um, you can turn it into corner points if you wanted to. What I like doing is selecting them all and there's this option here. Okay, click it once and it just like tidied, like undo. It's pretty close to its original shape but with just a whole lot less anchor points everywhere. So it's just a lot smoother. Okay, so this one here as well, he's a corner, I'm gonna put him to a curve. And it just, yeah, gives you a lot of control. Now, the primary um, the primary touch bar uh, button down the bottom left here, I can click on some of these guys. Actually, let's click on just that one. Let's click just this one guy, and I can hold down the primary and then swipe it to get to the secondary, and I can actually slide him along to decide where I want that point. So there's some cool, cool features in here. Um, same thing with him, probably, oh, click just one of them. Secondary button, move him down a bit, and then just start working on these, because I want it to be organic, but reasonably smooth. Is that guy a curve? He is now. Here we go. Faking hand-drawn, you know, is quite hard <laughs> to, to do. Uh, fake not caring, but still making it look good and caring. And so let's get this one, let's grab the pencil tool again. I'm gonna do the quote marks kind of the right way around. Man, that was pretty good. <laughs> I'm gonna go draw that nice in real life. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm trying to go for this more colloquial, playful version. And again, we're gonna go, I'm gonna select them both, go over here, grab my shape builder tool, which I really like, and just join them both up. Just draw a, click and draw a line all the way through them. All right, one of the other cool features that I like is, um, let's say that we do wanna kind of use the colors from this. So I'm gonna double click this. Um, and I want to just copy it. Uh, actually copy the appearance. So over here on the right, okay, there's this like scissors. Click on him, there's copy appearance, which is cool. And then I can click on this and say, yeah, paste appearance. I want fill color and stroke, yes please. And it's gone through and picked them. That's awesome, me. There's outline view as well, which is really important for me for some reason, okay? Especially when there's uh, some little funny stuff going on. You, goodbye in the bin. You kind of just double check how everything's kind of made and whether it's all connected up right after using the shape builder. Go back to preview. All right, some of the other cool features is actually, let's quickly add uh, a wand, some kind of circle in the middle here as well. And Again, select them both, shape builder, and just click once to delete it. Now I've got a kind of a hole through it, which is cool. All right, I'm gonna shrink this guy down, holding shift key down, or the touch button. And let's look at some of the other nice, this is kind of unique for I Illustrator for iPad. Okay, so we'll look at all the stuff that kind of comes over from Illustrator, but oh, at the bottom in the toolbar over here, can you see there's this option? It's a symmetry, or oh, repeat button. Okay, so let's click on mirror. And it's kind of what I wanted. Um, so I've got this mirror option. Now, you know, have you done it on the desktop version where you have to go like uh, object transform, reflect, and click preview because you hit, hit the wrong way. Um, this is just a really nice tactile way. Nice and simple because um, what else have you got? You can still organize these guys, like as in rotate them. I can still kind of play around with these things. 
uh, depending on what I want to do. Um, so in the middle here, there's that dotted line. There's the center one. If I drag it left and right, it will kind of move them closer together. And where I leave it, okay, say if I leave it here, if I rotate any of these ends, it's the pivot point. Okay, so I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just showing you some stuff now. Um, let's double click, go in. There is, let's go to this. Let's go to copy and I come out of there. And I'm going to paste another version. Okay, I should make a couple of duplicates. You sit over there, just in case. Uh, let's look at just, we'll look at one more. Let's look at radial, it's pretty cool. Uh, so there's lots of kind of on-screen uh, controls. So the one on the right here, if I drag it up and drag it down, it's like how many are part of the gang. Uh, this one here is just like, if I drag the starting and ending point, how many do you want? this top circle in the inner ring. Okay, you can see how it kind of combines in there. Man, it's, it's kind of beautiful how it works. Um, it needs to be record the video. I think you can actually stream from Illustrator for iPad. I'm not sure if that's working yet. Okay, but I know that's the plan for it for release. Um, but let's say you want this. Let's get down to this. You can still double click on them. Okay, and work, you know, kind of tidy them up. So you want something like that. Oh, awesome. Now let's look at uh, type. So let's say that we we kind of like, I don't know which version, don't even know. Uh, let's say we're gonna work with this one. We're gonna make a duplicate of it. We're gonna group it. We're gonna make it a bit smaller. Undo, make sure you hold down the primary touch button so it doesn't distort. And let's have a look at some of the cool things about fonts. So they've thought about fonts. It's very similar, but there's some nice perks. All right, the type tool. Uh, let's click once. Um, what I really like about the type tool is all the little icons underneath. I can click, hold, and drag. See this one here, the stripe, uh, well, the stripe this size. Okay, if I click it once, I can use the slider, but it's very cool. I can click, hold, and drag it left and right to get a, I don't know, I find this a really, I don't know, tactile way of doing fonts rather than the old, I don't know, 8, 10, 12, 16, 18, 24, weird numbers. Okay, this is a, a, a lot more tactile. Okay, so I'm gonna double click it. I am going to try and use the keyboard. N, D, Q, that'll work for me. Okay, and I am going to look at the fonts. The fonts are being really looked at. So very similar to the desktop version, but you can see over here, uh, I can click on this, my recent ones. Oh, Victor script, it's recent from, um, uh, from the desktop version, I wonder. And um, let's undo that. Double tapping with two fingers is the undo. It's very cool. Or you can use little buttons up here. So let's look at these. Now, uh, they've got your fonts on, you know, that are kind of available to you normally. Okay, but down the bottom here, there's that more fonts that I just click, clicked quickly. And they've broken them into categories, which is really nice. Um, a lot of these are and ones that are part of your subscription, okay, from Adobe Fonts, but they're not particularly on your machine at the moment. Um, yeah, there's great ones, there's terrible ones. Um, typewriter, wedding, Western. Nobody needs a Western font. Why does it have its own category? School, I bet you it's gonna have Comic Sans in there. It doesn't, but it's gonna have all the ones with the right letters for kids writing. Anyway, I'm going to find one I, I really like. It's just kind of, I don't know, I used to spend ages going through fonts in Illustrator, just kind of clicking, undo, clicking, undo, trying to find a group of fonts. I'm gonna to go to clean. I'm going to look for, anybody look for Basic Sans Black, that looks cool. It's kind of semi-serif, I'm not sure what you call it. It's got a couple of little serifs on it. Um, also in fonts, um, you can, let's say we make a duplicate of this one again. So I've got this guy. In terms of font sizings, you can actually grab the bottoms of the whole box and drag it up and down. And the same with the sides, okay, to play around with it. You can rotate it by hitting the little top one and do. Um, now let's look at variable fonts. Variable fonts are one of those, does this have much? Doesn't have much. Let's have a look at one that has variable fonts because I don't know, it's pretty exciting. There's not that many fonts around, but um, I'm gonna go back to more fonts. I'm gonna search for variable or var. Okay, I only have two on my computer at the moment, uh, Acumen and uh, Minion. I'm gonna use Acumen, because I wanna show you, back to the properties panel, what some of the perks for variable uh, fonts are. So you see this little button here? 
it, if I click on this, the photographer, the whoever developed this type has done a crazy job where like instead of just having, it does have all the regular light, extra lights, but there's everything in between. Watch this, when I click and drag this, watch the weight. Let's move it up here so we can zoom in. And so look, look at the weight. It just gets bigger. And it doesn't just like put a stroker on the outside. It is, you can see here, like have a look through where this N um, connects. You can see it doesn't just equally get bigger. It's, ah, oh, I'm blown away. <laughs> I know how hard it is to make a font. I've made like, I've tried to make my own font and only got to like D of lowercase. So uh, same with width. Okay, you can find a narrow font. Look at that, compressed. I can't remember, I can't remember what they all are. Condensed, compressed. And then we start getting into the wide and extra wides. Oh, look at that. Slant, it's not just leaning it over even though it kind of looks like it. Okay, I don't know. If you know fonts, you know that it's not just like false, uh, you know. Uh, faux italics. It's pretty crazy some of the fonts. We can get it perfectly dialed in. All right. Oh, I like it. But it's not going to work for... How's it going to work? Yeah, let's use it. Okay, uh, let's duplicate it because what I want to do is I want to show you that you can also outline type. Okay, so um, over here I'm going to go to this little option here. You can do type in a path, which we're not going to do, but let's outline the text. Okay, and let's have a little look. And let's say that I because I like it, but it's got, I don't know, too many sharp edges. I want to start doing things like direct selection tool, then maybe, I don't know, let's do it to these top two. And you can see these live corners from Illustrator. I can start doing nice things like that. Okay, and kind of working my way around and deciding which ones need the live corners. Oh, look at that. Well, that person spent all that time on this font, and I go in butcher it. <laughs> anyway, I like it. Um, three fingers is redo. Cool. Now let's say that we are enjoying what we've done and we want to share it with people. Hold shift. Um, you know, we've got this amazing thing that we want to share. I'm going to group it. What we can do to share it, in the top right here, there's this kind of like third icon. Click on this. So you can do a couple of things. You can do a quick export to PNG, which is really awesome. Just grab a PNG and sharing it, it's kind of the typical iPad sharing. I quite often share to this thing here, the um, Creative Cloud, because then it syncs on my desktop and it syncs on my phone and I could email it to people. There's, you know, there's lots of things you can do that way. Let's have a look at something else. So uh, obviously start live stream is, I'm not sure if that's working yet. I haven't, I haven't touched that. Um, but let's look at publish and export. So I can publish an AI file, PDF, SVG, PNG, PSD, like it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Now this is like exporting. I can just hit back in the top left hand side here and over here now, that is syncing on my desktop screen and on my phone. So I don't need to share it as such, okay, as an Illustrator file. But in this case, um, you know, if I needed an SVG exported for XD or something, I can do it within um, the iPad. All right, so I haven't clicked all the buttons in here. I just, I just started using it because it's new and I had some logos to design and I kind of, I guess, sharing my experience and why, you know, why I think maybe it's worth a go in terms of an extra tool for Illustrator and for those people who, yeah, do prefer kind of working from the iPad, especially the iPad Pro these days is getting pretty amazing. Connect a um, keyboard to it and use this pencil and you definitely need a fancy glove. All right, let me switch to the, um, the big camera and let's say goodbye. All right, that is us. I hope you enjoyed the video. What I'd like to do now is find out from you the feature that you liked the best out of it. Let me know in the comments and the feature you'd like to see next. Okay, uh, as part of the pre-release program, um, I guess we're looking for you know, what people want out of it. And I'll gather up all of our comments and pass it on to the uh, Illustrator iPad team. Uh, so let me know below. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Illustrator for iPad. Also, I've got lots of Illustrator for desktop stuff. Um, another thing is this has just been released now okay, for Adobe Max. At the exact same time this video comes out, I've got videos coming out for all the new updates for Illustrator for desktop. Uh, Photoshop, InDesign, XD, After Effects. I'll put links to those in the description as well if you want to keep up to date with those. Uh, you can check me out on social media okay, over here. And also, if you are looking to upgrade your Illustrator skills and you're like, actually, 
want to invest in myself and go a little bit further with Illustrator, uh, there'll be links to my courses below in the description. I've got an Illustrator for Essentials and Illustrator for Advanced, plus lots of other courses on Photoshop and, and Design and Illustrator and Dreamweaver and Premiere Pro and uh, XD and all sorts of other good things in there as well. All right, that's us. I will see you later. Bye now.